Hi guys, this is Lore and in this video you're going to learn two different ways for how to make scrunchies with secret pockets. One involves some sewing and the other one has not sewing at all. So let's start with the sewn version. To make a medium sized scrunchie, you first need to cut a piece of fabric that measures 22 and a half inches by 4 inches and 1 eighth of an inch. If you are using centimeters, this will be 57 centimeters by 10.5 centimeters. I'm using a stretch fabric that doesn't fray and a rotary cutter for this. But if your fabric does fray, it will be better to use six scissors or search the edges to help your scrunchies last longer. And if you don't have an overlocker to finish the edges, I have another video showing you how to search without a serger. I'm going to leave the link in the description box below if you want to check it out. Once you have your piece of fabric ready, fold it in half to find the center and make little cuts to mark it down. Now with the fabric laying flat and the centers located, we are going to mark the space where the zipper will be placed. For this I'm using a water erasable marking pen and I measure a space of 2 inches and 3 quarters of an inch which is equal to 7 centimeters. I do this on both sides of the fabric. And I should have done this on the right sides of the fabric, not on the back. But the good thing is that I can still see the marks on the front so I don't have to do it again. You can do it on the front of the fabric from the beginning and learn from my mistakes. <laughs> Now it's time to place the invisible zipper. It doesn't matter the length of your zipper because we are going to cut it anyway. The first thing is to locate the top stopper on the zipper because we are going to align it with the marks on the fabric. Now you can use pins to hold the zipper in place but if you want to sew a perfect zipper with ease, here is a little hack. It's by using this tape I'm obsessed with that keeps the zipper in the perfect position and you don't even have to worry about removing the tape after because it's water soluble which means it magically disappears with a little water and it's so lightweight you won't even notice if it's still there. On the description box below there is a link of where you can get this wonder tape and all the other tools I'm using in this video. Once I have the tape on the fabric, I place the zipper on top of it with the teeth facing inwards. And then I copy the second mark I had on the fabric and draw it on the zipper to indicate what I'm going to stop sewing. Now, to sew the invisible zipper, I'm going to use this zipper foot. It comes with different adapters, so you can use it in pretty much any domestic sewing machine. It has a little mark that tells you where you need to align the needle of your sewing machine. So when you start sewing, the stitches are going to be exactly where they need to be and get the perfect invisible zipper result. I open up the teeth of the zipper and then put the zipper foot down. I start sewing where the top stopper of the zipper is and backstitch to secure the stitches. Then sew until you reach the mark we draw on the zipper and backstitch again. When it's all done, it will look like this. Zip up the zipper and copy the end mark on the other side of it. Then we are going to place the other side of the zipper aligned with the marks on the fabric. Again, I use a piece of wonder tape to hold the zipper in place. And sew the other side of the zipper just like I did with the first side. Starting from the top stopper and finishing at the end point mark. Once you finish sewing both sides, it's time to get rid of the excess. For this, zip up and sew a couple of stitches just below the end mark to keep the zipper together. Then cut the rest of the zipper. To prevent it from fraying, I carefully use a lighter to seal the edges. Now let's put the ends of the fabric together like this with the good sides of the fabric facing each other. 
So using a straight stitch, 3 eighths of an inch or 1 centimeter away from the edge of the fabric. To finish sewing the rest of the scrunchie, locate the slider and zip it up a little bit. Then flip it inwards like this. So you are able to see the inside of the scrunchie and find where the stitches that are holding the zipper end and begin. With the regular zipper foot, which is the one that looks like this, we are going to sew the rest of the scrunchie. For this, place the needle exactly where the last stitch that is holding the zipper ends. Then sew a couple of stitches and back stitch a little to secure it. Continue sewing using a straight stitch 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. You will notice that fabric will begin to gather inside and you will need to pull out the fabric like this while you keep sewing forward. When it's time to pull more fabric, make sure that you are just sewing on the two edges and not grabbing the fabric that is inside. Otherwise, you won't be able to turn your scrunchie inside out. By doing this, you should be able to reach the other side where the zipper stitches begin. Once you get there, back stitch again and you are done with the sewing part. Unzip the zipper and turn the fabric inside out through the zipper opening to get something like this. Cut a piece of elastic, in my case I have very thin wrists, so I like mine 6 inches and 3 quarters of an inch long. In centimeters, this is 17 centimeters. Using a safety pin, pass the elastic inside the scrunchie. I also use a pin to hold the other end of the elastic like this before I lose sight of it. Then, when I have the other end of the elastic out, I tie both ends of the elastic together twice. Trim a little bit the ends of the elastic, then distribute the fabric equally and you are done. You will have a professional looking scrunchie with zipper pocket. Now, if sewing is not your thing, here is the no sew version. For this one, you are going to use another piece of fabric with the same measurements of 22 and a half inches by 4 inches and 1 eighth of an inch, which is 57 centimeters by 10.5 centimeters. Then, just as we did with the other one, fold it in half and mark the centers with a little cut. For this one, instead of a zipper, we are going to use a piece of hook and loop tape. I'm using E6000 glue here and this is not 100% necessary but if you want to make the process less messy, a syringe and a precision tip like this are super helpful. Ok, so for the hook and loop fasteners, I cut a piece that measures around 3 inches or 7.5 centimeters long. You can use regular scissors or zigzag scissors for this. I have seen this type of tape fray, so that's why I prefer to use the zigzag scissors. I also cut the tape to make it narrower, like around 3 eighths of an inch or 1 centimeter width. Then it's time to take the piece of fabric and fold the edges 3 eighths of an inch or 1 centimeter inwards like this. And press down using a regular iron to mark the folds a little bit. Sewing gauge like this one makes the process easier and more precise. Then I fill up my syringe with glue and once it's ready we are going to put the hook and loop fasteners where the marks indicate where the center of the scrunchie is. Add some glue to the hook and loop tape and place it on the fabric like this. Do the same with the other side. And now put something on top, like a book or whatever you have around to press the tape down for around 10 minutes while the glue dries up, holding everything in place. After that, it's time to put the ends of the fabric together with the right sides of the fabric facing each other. Add some glue to one of the ends and stick them together. Again, add some weight and let it dry for 5 minutes. You will get something like this. 
And now it's time to glue together the rest of the scrunchie. So I locate the hook and loop closure and right next to it I start applying glue on one of the folds I previously pressed with the iron. Then I stick the other side of the fabric like this. I do this all around the fabric until I reach the other side of the tape. And once it's all done, fold it in half and put some weight on it to let the glue dry for around 10 minutes. Meanwhile, you can measure and cut your elastic. Again, I use only 6 inches and 3 quarters of an inch or 17 centimeters of elastic. Then attach a safety pin to either side of the elastic. And when the drying time is up, open up the hook and loop closure and insert the safety pin through it. Remember to attach the other end of the elastic to the fabric using a regular pin so you won't lose it while you pass the safety pin all around the tunnel. Finish it up by tying the ends of the elastic together with a double knock. And that's it! You got a no so scrunchy with a secret pocket. Let me know in the comments below which one do you like the best, the sewing or the no sewing version. Remember that anything you desire, if you can imagine it, you can create it. And stay tuned because the next video will be about how to turn an empty roll of paper towels into this gorgeous scrunchie holder to organize all your scrunchies with a lot of style. So yep, if you want more videos, smash that subscribe button and click on the little bell to get notified when the fresh content is ready. Thank you so so much for watching and for sharing this video with whoever you think it can be helpful for. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!